Hello! In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to bake a normal map using the multi-resolution workflow. In this video, we'll go over baking a normal map without using the multi-resolution workflow. For this method, we need two things. We need a high poly mesh and we need a low poly mesh to bake down to. In our UV editor window, which you can access at the top there, we are just going to define some seams for the model real quick. That's a combination of alt shift click and shift click to select different loops and uh, then U and clicking on mark seams and then when you're ready to unwrap you press U and you can unwrap by angle. And we'll also do one down the bottom here. There we go. So we've got almost the entirety of our map filled over here on the left, which means when we're putting an image texture on this, we're going to be getting a, a really good ratio of detail to file size. So now over in the shading tab, you're going to drag out from your normal socket and type in normal map. And you want to make sure that it's normal map, not that you're getting the normal on a bump map or something. And then from the color, you want to drag out an image texture color. And then you can click on new. We're going to call this uh, Crown Tutorial, Tutorial Normal 2 because I am refilming. And I'm going to make this, uh, going to make this actually pretty small because I'm doing this for a tutorial and it takes a long time to save and bake if it's bigger but we're just gonna save that and then over in our render tab we want to make sure that we're in cycles and then we're going to go down to our bake area here and it'll be on combined by default but we're going to change it to normal definitely going to want to do selected to active and uh, you almost always want to have cage selected for this as well. But the cage extrusion and max ray distance matter a lot in terms of the scale of the model determines what you need those to be. So your model being a different size and scale and you know having different outcroppings and whatnots compared to mine means that it's gonna have to be different. It might be a good idea to inflate your model slightly first so it surrounds the entirety of the high poly mesh you're making. And a lot of times this will get you a little bit of a cleaner result. Before you bake any textures in Blender, you have to make sure that they're actually not selected. And we're going to make sure that we have our high poly crown selected as well as our uh, low poly here, but we want to make sure that the low poly is the actual active selection. And before you click on bake, make sure that your render settings, your max samples are one and your denoise is off. When you're baking normal maps, it's not using rays in the normal way. So if you have a whole bunch of samples, then it just takes longer, but it doesn't actually increase quality at all. And let's just click on bake. And let's see, okay, that's, that's looking pretty good. Um, there's a couple of little flaws in here that you can see. This is what we'd call an inverted area. And basically what that means is the ray went like a little bit too far and it got the geometry that was behind it. And that's not the biggest deal. Uh, I mean, it is kind of a big deal that it's gonna look like shit <laughs> when you uh, actually, that part of the area is gonna look funky, but fixing it's not a very big deal. Uh, but first, let's just bring this into our texture slot and see how it did. You're going to notice immediately that we have these really bad, ugly seams. And what's going on there is we have to come over here and press Alt-S to save the image once we've clicked on the image area there. And we're just going to save as image. And now we can change the color space to non-color and that'll make it show up properly. And if you have any other issues, uh, sometimes making sure that UV map is selected over here in the normal map area helps out with that. Uh, and it should generally be tangent space. If you baked your normal map in Blender, it should be tangent space and that should work. 
we can also go in and get rid of our displace modifier there and then we can hide our high poly one and you can see we have a near perfect bake um and you you know there's that little area there that might actually be in the um oh no there it is so you've hot you're gonna sooner or later if you're baking normal maps you're gonna have to deal with some stuff like this right um you don't have to if you use the multi-resolution workflow which is why i often recommend the multi-resolution workflow this isn't really a big deal if because chances are like nobody's ever going to actually see the inside of this for this particular mesh right but i'm still going to show you how to fix it so let's go over to our texture paint and you can do this in a uh, in a third party application as well, if you wish. Uh, but I'm going to show it in Blender because it's Blender tutorial. Blender's free. I know you have Blender. So we're going to go into texture paint and we can use our clone brush here. Um, and we should also probably turn on X symmetry. That's right up in the top corner here. And we can put our 2D cursor around. That's with shift and right click to move your 2D cursor. Let me turn on screencast keys for you in this window as well. There we go. And then we can just paint over that. And you wanna make sure that you, know, you get a pretty matching color. If you don't want to use the clone brush or you're not getting a perfect result with it, you can also paint over it with your paint hard or paint soft brushes. But uh, something you need to know for that is in your shading tab, you're going to want to change the color space back to sRGB first. Otherwise, you won't be able to use your color picker to actually get a proper color picked. Um, I don't really know why but it's something that happens and now you know. I should mention also, if you want to be able to get a proper color pick with the color picker tool while in texture paint mode, you have to go up to your viewport shading and by default, it'll be studio. You wanna change it to flat, but you can see that's looking okay. And you can also see that the way this kind of baked originally isn't even necessarily perfect, right? So we can turn off our symmetry here and we can color pick over here and get something more matching on this side. And if you're ever wondering what this is called, uh, this would be manually fixing your normal maps. And you know, 3D software is a lot better than it used to be. You don't have to do this kind of stuff a lot anymore but it's really good to know how still. So make sure you save your image again after you've done your texture painting uh, or when you go back to the shading tab and you change your color space back to non-color, it will delete the changes you just made and you're gonna have to do them again. But once we're back in non-color, you can see there's, there's a little bit of artifacting there. Um, if you go into Photoshop and you just select those inverted areas, press Control I to invert them, it works like really, really well, better than painting it out manually. But yeah, there you go. Uh, this is now a game ready asset, right? If you look at the statistics, the high poly version was over 2 million polys and we have it down to 676 triangles 338 faces like it's it's a massive massive improvement and there you go that's how you normal map with the normal normal map uh workflow instead of the multi-resolution workflow thank you very much for watching the video if you enjoyed it like comment and subscribe and if you didn't enjoy it like comment and subscribe and yeah, uh, I, I'll see you next time. I hope you have a beautiful day and all your dreams come true.